In this tutorial, we are going to discuss client credentials grant flow and how to implement that in the context of microservices using a design pattern called token relay. This is the part three of Spring Security OAuth 2 Keycloak series, where we are discussing how to implement OAuth 2 using Spring Security and Keycloak. If you want to check out the first two parts of this video series, you can find the links in the description section. So without any further delay, let's start the video. The client credentials grant flow is mainly used for machine to machine in authorization, which means if the client is a CLI application or a shell script running on a remote server or even a Spring Boot microservice, it doesn't make sense to use a standard username password combination with the login page like how we implemented in the first two parts of this series using the authorization code, code flow grant type or Pixie enhanced authorization code flow grant type. For this reason, when using this flow, the clients will directly make a POST request to the authorization server with grant type as client credentials and it will also include the client ID and client secret to authenticate themselves with the authorization server. The authorization server will validate the credentials and if they are valid, will generate an access token and sends it back to the client. When the client needs to access the protected resource, similar to the other grant types, it will include the access token as part of the request header and then the resource server will verify the validity of the token by sending the access token to the authorization server. You may have already observed the client credential flow is significantly simpler compared to the other two authorization code flows. That's because uh, of the confidentiality which is involved uh, based on the client. So now let's go ahead and see a demo on how to implement this grant type. So I have a Spring Boot application up and running already and now I open a REST client like Postman to make a POST call to request the token from the authorization server. So here is the endpoint to which we are making the request. You can get this endpoint by opening the Realm settings inside Keycloak and clicking on the Open ID configuration link and by copying the token endpoint from the JSON. Back to the Postman client as part of the POST request I am passing the request body with the first field as grant type which is going to be client credentials followed by the field client id. I am going to provide the client id as OAuth2 client credentials. I already created a client inside Keycloak with this client id. I will show you how to create this client also shortly. The next field is client secret which is an auto generated secret by the Keycloak server. So now if I click on send you can see that we receive the access token and a refresh token. And we can now use this access token to make a request to our resource server. Okay, I hope you understood how we can request a token from the authorization server through this demo. Now let's go ahead and see how to implement the client credentials grant flow in a Spring Boot application. Okay, as a first step, we have to create a client inside Keycloak which can access the authorization server through the client credentials grant flow. For that, I'm going to open our realm we created before and click on clients tab to the left side of the screen and click on create. The client name I'm going to type in is auth2 underscore auth2 client credentials and click on save. After you clicked on save, you can see some more details about the client. We don't need to care about that. But the first thing we are going to do is to change the access type of the client to confidential. As we are implementing client credential flow, the client is usually not available for public and it is because usually the client is running on a remote, remote server somewhere. So hence the reason why we are choosing the option confidential. After that, just click on save and now you will see the credentials tab. If you click on it, we can see a client secret which is generated already for us. Just copy this value. We will use it in our Spring Boot application later. So we completed the Keycloak configuration part. Now let's go ahead and implement the Spring Boot configuration part. For that I'm going to open our initial starter project on GitHub. So you can download this project from the GitHub link in the description section. And make sure you are on the initial branch to code along and follow the tutorial. So in this part we are going to mainly focus on the OAuth2 client credentials demo project. If you expand it, you can see two projects inside the main project, the microservice 1 and 2. For now, to implement the client credentials demo, we will start working on the microservice 1 project. Then later in the video, we will see how to bring microservice 2 into picture. Okay, so I'm going to open the pom.xml file of the microservice 1 project. And inside this file, I'm going to add four dependencies in here. 
The first one is going to be Spring Boot Starter OAuth2 Client, which will enable the OAuth2 Client functionality for our project. In this case, we don't have any JavaScript application which will act as the client. In the previous Pixie authorization code flow example, we have the Angular application as a client and the Spring Boot application as the resource server. But in this case, the Spring Boot microservice one will act as both client as well as the resource server. That's why we have to add also the resource server dependencies, that is the Spring Boot starter OAuth2 resource server. And to enable Jose framework, the JavaScript object and signing encryption framework, we have to add the Spring Boot security OAuth2 Jose dependency. And lastly, we will enable Spring security itself inside the project. So I'm going to add Spring Boot starter security dependency. All right, now after we added all this dependency, make sure you force IntelliJ to download the dependencies. And once this is done, the next step is to configure the client credentials properties inside the project. So I'm going to open application.properties file. And in there, I'm going to copy the existing properties from the project OAuth2 authorization code demo as the properties are going to be quite similar. So I copied the properties and I'm going to paste them into microservice one application.properties file. So once this is done, we have to change some properties here. Obviously, we're not going to use the time leaf client uh, reference in this project. So we created a different client for that. So I'm going to replace all the usages of OAuth2 time leaf demo client with OAuth2 client credentials. And also I'm going to replace the grant type from authorization, from authorization code to client credentials. And now let's also update the client secret. We still have the old client secret where we copied from the authorization code flow demo. So I'm going to open the key clock server and I'm going to open the client over to client credentials and under the client under the credentials tab, I'm going to copy the client secret, go back to IntelliJ and replace the client secret with the, the new client secret. And we also don't need any redirect URI. So I'm going to delete the property. And lastly, I'm going to add also the JSON web key set URI property as this is a resource server and need the reference to the key set to verify the JSON web token we will receive from the request. We also don't need to type this property again. We can copy the value from the backend of from the OAuth2 Pixie demo project and paste it inside the microservice one project. Now I'm going to create a package called as controller and inside the package, I'm going to create a class called as controller one. As this is going to be a rest endpoint, I'm going to annotate it with rest controller annotation. And inside the controller, I'm going to create a method called as hello rest template, which returns a string from this method. And inside the method, let's return some random string value like hello. And I'm going to annotate this method with a get mapping annotation as this is going to handle the get request. And I'm going to pass in the request mapping as slash microservice one slash home. And lastly, I'm going to also define the response status also as HTTP status dot okay. Now, one last thing I'm going to do is to run this application on a different port than the default 8080 port, as we also have other applications running on port 8080. So I'm going to add the property server.port 8083. So by adding this property, our microservice one application will run on port 8083 and will not clash with any existing ports. And we also have to update the security configuration in our project to inform Spring Security to treat our project as a resource server and some default values which are expected from a REST backend application. There is no need to write new code here. I'm going to create a new package called config and inside the package, I'm going to create a class called as security config. Inside this class, we can just copy the code which we already wrote for Pixie demo project. So I'm going to just copy the contents inside the security config class and paste it inside the security config class of microservice one project. All right, now it's time to test our implementation. So I'm going to start the microservice one application. It should be running on port 8083 and now open the Postman client. 
So first we are going to make a request to the token endpoint of the authorization server with our client ID and client secret. For that we can use the OAuth2 feature of Postman. So just open a new tab inside the Postman client and click on the authorization tab and in the drop down named type make sure you select OAuth2.0. Now on the right side you will see some more options to fill. First of all I am going to select the grant type as client credentials and in here I am going to provide the access token URL. You can get this information by opening our realm we created in part 1 of this series. I am going to open our realm and click on the open ID configuration link and now I am going to copy the endpoint for token and paste it in postman client. Next we have to provide the client ID and client secret. I am going to copy these details from our project and paste them into Postman. For the field scope, I am going to leave it as open ID and now click on get new access token. It will take a few seconds to connect to the Keycloak authorization server and it will show us the access token and ID token it received from Keycloak. Now to use this token for our request, to microservice one, you can just click on the use token button and this token will automatically be added to all our requests. So this is a nice little feature in Postman which will make us more productive or else you have to usually make a separate call to the token endpoint by preparing the request body with all the client ID, client secret and grant type details we saw in the starting of the tutorial. Alright now if I click on send you can see that we see the value hello here. So the client credential flow is working perfectly. So that's all well and good. Now usually in a microservice environment, we don't just have one microservice. We have tens or even hundreds of microservices and as part of a use case, and as part of a use case, a request can hop and travel through multiple microservices to complete the transaction or a request. So in that case, how we can pass the token from one microservice to another microservice? For this we can use a design pattern called as token relay. So let's understand this token relay pattern and how to implement it in our project in the next section. So when you are working on a project based on microservice architecture, generally we deal with multiple microservices which talk to each other. In this case when we first receive the request from the user, let's say to microservice A and if this microservice will call another microservice B. As this is also a resource server, we have to forward the access token as part of the request or else we will receive a 403 error when the request reaches microservice B. This is called as token relay pattern where we are forwarding the access token for each outgoing request for our microservice. Similar to how a pattern will be exchanged in a relay race. Implementing this pattern is pretty straightforward. While forwarding the request from our microservice, we have to include the access token as part of the authorization header. We can do that in Spring Boot in two ways. The first one is using the standard REST template class which is not favored anymore by Spring Framework and the other one is to use web client class which is preferred alternative recommended by Spring Boot. As the support to REST template is still not deprecated, I am going to show you both the ways of implementing token relay including REST template and as well as web client. So to implement token relay using REST template, we can directly create an instance of REST template in our controller and use it to make requests. But we first have to implement an endpoint in microservice 2 to, to be able to call it from microservice 1. So let's go ahead and do that. Inside the pom.xml of microservice 2, I am going to add three dependencies. These are nothing new. The first one is the resource server dependencies as the resource server dependency as the microservice 2 is going to be a resource server and this time not a client like microservice 1. And I'm going to add also the dependencies to enable Jose framework and Spring security. Man, make sure to click on the Maven icon on the top right corner of the screen if you're using IntelliJ to force IDE to download the Maven dependencies. And now let's open the application.properties file and configure it with the JSON web key set URI similar to microservice one. So we can directly copy and paste this property from microservice one application.properties file and paste it into microservice2 application.properties file. Now I'm going to create a package called as controller and inside this package I'm going to create a class called as controller2. I'm going to copy the controller code from controller1 class inside the microservice1 
as this is going to be pretty similar. So I'm going to copy the code right from the import statement and copy it inside the controller2 class. And also I'm going to rename the class as controller2 and also the string microservice inside the get mapping as microservice2. Lastly, I'm going to add the server.port property as 8084 inside microservice2 application.properties so that it won't clash with the existing ports. Alright, now we configured also microservice2 as a resource server and created the endpoints. Now we are ready to implement the token relay. So I'm going to open controller1 class again and create a REST template instance. I can do that by adding private final REST template equals new REST template builder dot build. This will create a new instance of REST template with default values which are enough for our use case. Now inside the method, we have to make a call to microservice2. For that, I need to first access the JOT, the JSON web token. We can retrieve this token by first checking our security context holder. So I'm going to type security context holder dot get context dot get authentication dot get principal and cast the written type of this principal to JWT object. So now we have the JOT token. So using the REST template, I can now make a REST call to microservice2. For that, I'm going to add the token to the authorization header with a bearer scheme. For that, I'm going to first create a header. I can do that by using the HTTP headers object from the Spring framework. To this header, we need to add authorization header. So I'm going to add the key value as authorization and bearer followed by the token. So I can now retrieve the token by typing jwt.getTokenValue and now it's time to make a request to microservice2. So I can use the exchange method of the rest template to make the call. So I'm going to type rest template.exchange followed by the URL of the microservice2 endpoint followed by the HTTP method. So I'm going to add this as get followed by the HTTP entity. I'm going to create an object for this HTTP entity by providing the HTTP headers as the constructor arguments. And lastly, as the return type of this endpoint is going to be a string, I'm going to define the return type as string.class. So I can now store the response of the rest template call in a string, which is wrapped around a response entity. And I'm going to just add the return value as hello and message from microservice2 is and in here I'm going to pass on the response from the response entity by typing response.getBody. Okay, that should work now. So let's restart our microservice1 application and see how it's working. Back in the authorization type, make sure you request a new token as the token you have requested before may have already expired. And now if you make a request to the microservice1 endpoint, you should see the message hello and message from microservice2 is hello. That's perfect. Now what's remaining is to test this also with web client. For that we need to add the web flux dependency to the project. So open the pom.xml file and add the dependency spring boot starter web flux. And again, make sure to force the download of Maven dependencies by clicking on the Maven icon to the top right side corner. And inside the controller1 class, I'm going to create another method called hello web client and add the get mapping annotation as microservice1 slash home slash web client. And I'm also going to add the response status annotation with value as HTTP status dot OK. As we are going to return a string from this method, I'm going to also change the return type as string. And inside this method, basically I can again copy the existing code from the rest template implementation. The code to retrieve the JOT token will stay the same. And what needs to be changed is to use web client to make the request. For that, I'm going to first define an instance of web client. So I'm going to type private final web client equals web client dot builder dot build. And I'm going to store this instance of web client in a variable called web client. So back inside the hello web client method, I'm going to type web client dot get to make a get request followed by the URI, which I can copy from the rest template call. And now I have to add the bearer token as the authorization header. So I'm going to type headers and pass in the Lambda as header dot 
set bearer auth and to this method call i'm going to pass in the value jwt dot get token value as an argument so next to retrieve the response from this rest call i'm going to add the method retrieve and in web client if you are expecting a string object or for instance any object we have to denote it as mono type so i'm going to call the method dot body to mono and pass in the type as string dot class followed by the call to the block method this is some reactive programming syntax i am not going to go deep inside this because this that's a huge topic in itself so all you need to know is whenever you are making a rest call using web client from a spring mvc project you have to add the block as a terminal call which will return the response from the rest call okay now we can store this return value inside a string variable called as response and i am going to add the message again as hello message from microservice 2 is and append the response variable to the string all right now let's restart our microservice 1 application okay the application is now started and one mistake i did is uh, instead of adding microservice 1 i added microservice so i am going to add the one again and i am going to restart the application again so that it will be both our uh, endpoints will be similar so the application is now started i'm going to go back to postman and in here i'm going to make sure that i have the correct url here so localhost 8083 microservice 1 home/webclient and as it's been some time i think uh, due to short the token expiry time we have to request the access token again so i'm going to click on get new access token so the authentication is complete and we are going to get the access token back from the server so i'm going to use this token and i'm going to make a request again to the web client endpoint and here you can see hello message from microservice 2 is hello so this is using the web client to make a request to microservice 2 and this is the response we are seeing now so that's it for this tutorial i hope you learned about how client credentials grant and token relay mechanism work in the next part I will finalize the series by explaining some other kinds of grant types like refresh token grant type, password grant type, and we will also see how to implement single sign-on using GitHub through Keycloak. So I will see you in the next tutorial. Until then, happy coding, techies!